number one medicine in the world is water. You talk to the water, address it, thank it, because you're mostly water, your own self. Water is conscious, alive, ever flowing, and needing our respect. That's the secret, that's the magic, it's the water. When you're talking about uranium mining in an aquifer, that means you're threatening all the groundwater. People, please don't be apathetic about what's happening because it's very serious. You cannot eject water down through the aquifer into the uranium deposits and pump it back out again, pump the residue back in the aquifer and not pollute everybody's well. There's a lot of science, so-called science, that says, well, this can be contained and uh, we can clean it up. It's, it's in an underground sealed aquifer. But all of that science is for sale. There's a lot of science that says it's very safe to drill for oil on the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. But that science is for sale too. underneath the ground. There's an estimate that there's $500 million worth of uranium just just in the Edgemont area. But as often, we sometimes think, well, gee, that doesn't affect me until we get a check in the mail and they want to drill right over there at the base of that hill where our water supply is. And, you know, we start screaming and hollering, no, 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 we don't want you on this property. But once that water's gone, there's no way you can clean those aquifers. It's a Canadian company interested now. The money will go to Canada. The uranium will go to China and India. And maybe it'll come back to us before we know it. I think it's important for people to, to immediately associate the word uranium with water. of us that have cancer are exposed to the uranium from the bombing area and in the waters. Our lives are precious and we need to live it the fullest because we have two paths to walk. One is humanity and one is the sacred life. We are here for a reason, for a sacred purpose. When the Black Hills were taken, was taken from the Native Americans, that the, the, BL, the Bureau of Land Management, the federal government retained the mineral rights and we as private landowners have no right to say yes or no. It's not going to be up to us to say yes or no. We have to go to the nuclear regulatory committees and and show our support against it 
we don't have a vote. They don't ask us. They can just come into your land and start mining without your permission. Hey ya, hey yo, hey, hey yo, ha ya, hey ya. Spirits told me that I'm supposed to put a eagle feather on all the horses of the wild horse sanctuary. For a reason. So that they're, they're all together praying and they're all connected. They're all sacred. In my lifetime, that's what I'm going to do. Put a tie eagle feather on every horse there. So I did my first feather tying ceremony on Prairie Longsia and other horses to come. A good thing is going to come from it. Good prayers. There'll always be a place in this world for animals to come. Paradise. Took de o ma ki ha ki ti so. Took de o ma ki ha ki ti so. Took de o ma ki ha ki ti so. Took de o ma ki ha ki ti so. Dukte 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 o ma ki ha ki ti so. Much of this land uh, has uranium underlying it, uh, and that it's seen as a, uh, a material resource rather than something that should be left in the ground. Uh, the consumptive need of energy, uh, and more important, profit, because most of the uranium mining proposed in the Black Hills region right now is all profit-driven. This uranium isn't going to potentially fuel U.S.-based nuclear reactors. It's being mined by a, a Canadian or French company to be sold on the international market, largely in China or in India, uh, to produce new reactors. So we're not talking about some kind of strategic natural resource. We're talking about profit. We're not really even talking about domestic profit. We're talking about multinational corporations. Were there to be an accident with uranium mining in an aquifer, we're talking about poisonous chemicals that have a half-life of millions of years. This region would be gone from human develop human habitation, period. I wasn't here, but my neighbors told me what it was like in, in uh, hot springs in Edgemont where they had to ration water because the people south of there had 5,000 gallons of mineral wells. Well, that's exactly what the uranium people need is a 5,000 gallon well to start with. You, the strata, the underground water won't produce that kind of water. Here in the early 21st century, water is just not in a surplus. We need it for drinking and for agriculture. Uh, there's not enough to waste. On permanently remove from drinking capability through the nuclear power industry. There is plenty 
of uranium stored already in convenient government-owned mines called missile silos. Uh, there are hundreds of years of nuclear power in the warheads that the United States, the, Soviet, the former Soviet Union, and the other nuclear powers of the world possess. We could power the planet's needs for centuries on just that uranium. And that doesn't just affect us here on the Black Hills Wild Horse Sanctuary. It affects everybody in the Black Hills. And maybe that's part of the power of this land, is that it does have the uranium and the gold or the spirituality or whatever it is that makes us so drawn to it. And I think that it was the lack of, of people understanding that somebody can come on your own private ground and mine something, pollute your water, and you don't have any say-so about it one way or the other. You, all, all you can do is make other people be aware so if enough people are against it, then maybe it won't happen. The way these companies are viewing the uranium here is no different than a multinational might look at a resource in, say, Tanzania or uh, another part of the world. It's just a resource. The people here are just on top of a resource. It's all about profit, but that's a very real uh, and credible threat. When you're playing with the very life of a region, and that's what the groundwater is for this the arid region. We're fortunate to have a very wet year this year and there's a lot of green grass, but this area needs its groundwater. And so uranium mining stirs up poison in the groundwater. And a, and a mistake in the ground uh, involving uranium and an aquifer is absolutely catastrophic. Mining is unsafe, transportation is unsafe, reactors are unsafe, disposal doesn't exist. This place should stay forever uh, in Fall River County, and, and, uh, but it's going to take some help because it's in real danger now. If they get a foothold in Edgemont, then they're going to go to another spot around the hills and another spot. Many of the byproducts of uranium mining, to include uranium, have half-lives uh, longer than human beings have been on the planet. So when you see uranium equate water and real and immediate threat to the water A sanctuary, to me, that word is warm, safe, and you don't have to worry about watching yourself because nobody's going to sneak up on you. And that's what it means to me here, and that's exactly what I feel. This is going to be my last great battle, but I'm going to win this one.
Make a way.